Yes, there we go. Thank you, Keith. Aqua Teen Hunger Force. Uh, I guess we could probably have a round of introductions now that almost, I think I think pretty much everyone is here by now. So my name is Dave. I'm actively involved with the New Jersey chapter. And um, I guess we can run down the, the chart, run down the, the list right now. So I guess, Seth, go ahead. Hi, uh, I'm Seth, the one of the um, New Jersey state coordinators. Dennis, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Dennis, and I'm coordinator for Slovenia. Go ahead, guys. Anybody. <laughs> Hi, I'm Julio from Connecticut. Doug, good evening. It's James. We talked a couple weeks back about coming on a radio address, so thanks a lot for coming out this evening and joining us. Really do appreciate it. This is uh, coordinator for New Jersey also, and uh, a little bit of uh, software, trying to get into software development, so kind of computer savvy. I have a massive amount of respect for somebody who does software. I always say to friends of mine who do it, it takes a special breed of psycho to want to stare at code all day long. And I love the tools you create. I could not possibly contemplate sitting in front of a computer and doing what you do, but massive props to you. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, fortunately, some of the stuff that I've developed uh, in the past hasn't really helped society too much, but uh, working on that. Damn can flicker worm. My lap. Okay. Okay, I already introduced myself. I'm Michael from Trinidad and Tobago. And um, I would like to ask Douglas a question. Um, are the ideas of the Zeitgeist Movement gaining any ground in um, NASA? Wow, that's an excellent question. Um... Specifically, I would say no. I don't think anybody has really brought it to their attention as as an ideology, as the way it is right now. Now, the tenets of what the Venus Project stands for, which is, of course, what the Zeitgeist Movement advocates. So, I'll, I I often default right back to the core, which is the Venus Project. You know, to me, the the Zeitgeist Movement is the movement that, of course, advocates the Venus Project. So, I'll, I'll divert back to the Venus Project. Uh, in most cases, because that's what we're all promoting here. Um, they, the tenets of the Venus Project in in as sustainability, uh, reusability, uh, things of that nature, have always existed in NASA because space exploration requires it. Um, if you don't have reusable, sustainable systems in space, people will die. You cannot live in that environment without reusable, re sustainable systems, um, mainly because of the cost of constant resupply of sending up buku loads of supplies on a regular basis is prohibitive. It's, it's also energy prohibitive um, in, in, in fuel costs and, and things of that nature. But that's why NASA has always been on the forefront and is primarily one of the main reasons why we are technically capable of actually, you know, doing what we're planning on doing on the Earth is having all these sustainable systems, these clean energy, this renewable energy, advanced materials, things of that nature are – have all primarily been derived because of space exploration. So I would say that NASA is very much aware of the technical aspects of what the Venus Project is all about without having to actually be aware of the Venus Project, if you understand what I mean. Yeah, I get it, but um, I think I was trying to ask really, I don't know what's the situation up there, but um, so this question might not be specific, might not really reflect the situation you're actually in, but have you, is it possible you can get the ideas across to them? Have you tried to do that? Forgive me if I don't understand how this would work. It would be very difficult, and the reason why – not that I don't want to. I mean let me put it this way. I talk to my coworkers about it all the time, and, and they, you know, they understand where I'm coming from and, and what it's all about and things of that nature. But you've you got to remember I don't work directly with NASA. I don't work for NASA. 
I work with NASA, and there is a, a slight difference. There's NASA is a very convoluted organization, and it's very politically motivated, especially these days. Um, when it first started, it was political, but it was driven by the scientists and the engineers to get to the moon and beat the Russians. That was the political part. It was the scientists and engineers that put everything together and, and set up the organization and got it done. Well, things have kind of changed, and now the politicians are the one driving everything, and we all know that they suck anyway. So they're driving the scientists and the engineers into the dumps. And so NASA right now is going through a very difficult time. And when you say NASA, people think about the meatball, you know, what we call the meatball, the NASA logo and, and all that, the circular logo. People don't realize that there are subcontracting companies, there are contracted companies and subcontracting companies that work with NASA. It's not just NASA that does everything. So, for example, NASA works with USA, which is the United Space Alliance. The United Space Alliance is a special company that is basically 50-50 Lockheed Martin and Boeing. And that was built a long time ago so that the two major aerospace players at the time didn't get – didn't monopolize all the work. Then you've got Boeing and Lockheed and Northrop Grumman and, and other orbital sciences and other major companies in the aerospace industry that are primary contractors. Then they have to give a certain percentage of their work to subcontractors. So that's who I work with. I work with a subcontractor. We all work in the same building and do the same stuff. But I just the reason why I'm giving you this long-winded explanation here is so that people understand that I don't work directly for NASA, so it's not like I can go talk to them on a regular basis. I work in the Boeing building with the Boeing people, and I interface every once in a while with a NASA person, but not directly. Even if I did work there, let me say this. The odds of me promoting the Venus Project to NASA would be – or not, the effectivity of me doing that would be pointless. It wouldn't work, and here's why. NASA is a government entity. You cannot talk politics or anything like that at work in a, in a federal organization like that. So even if I did bring up the Venus Project, there is no way that the NASA organization would support it. Now, individual members of NASA, sure. You can talk to anybody any way like that, but you will never get an official stance or any kind of shift by NASA to promote or advocate the Venus Project because for all intents and purposes, it is a socioeconomic political movement by, by its nature, by what it is, and they won't, they won't sign off on anything like that. Okay, so I understand what you were saying. So moving away from NASA now, should – the, um, the Zeitgeist movement, who advocate the ideas of the, v, um, the Venus Project, should um, should we um, try specifically to target scientists? I mean, I know we have to target the general public, but advocate this to scientists. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I, that's the that's the best way to go. Instead of going when you're talking about like. You, if you want to reach NASA or kind of passively reach NASA, reach out to the employees, to, to the individual people, to the scientists, to the engineers on a, on a case-by-case -case basis as, as individual people, and, and then kind of go from there. So yes, without question, you know, go try to talk to scientists, talk to university professors, because especially in the engineering and the sciences, they are scientists. They have to do research at the university. You're usually working on research projects and things of that nature, and they teach as kind of a side note um, to their job. Uh, and so reaching them, contacting them on a case-by-case -case basis is definitely more beneficial than trying to go the organizational route. Okay, thanks. Doug, I had one uh, question about um, when we do reach out to scientists and professionals that would be, you know, crucial to the Venus Project. Uh, how would we go about? Do you have a couple professional organizations in mind that you personally, you know, as as one person, you know, you, you don't have the resources to um, contact an entire list of people, whereas as three, you know, tri-state chapters. We would have the resources to help you and the and the project as a whole out with that. So perhaps do you have any suggestions about who and where to look? 